after being knocked out from behind, I woke up, tied down to a swivel chair. My head throbbed with intensity, and the rope was wrapped around me so tight that I lost all circulation in my arms. There was a vanity mirror placed in front of me. I stared at myself in disbelief. What a cruel joke, I thought. I had forgotten how ugly I had become. I used to be beautiful like my twin sister, Ronnie. Unfortunately, she was brutally murdered a few years ago by Mira, the girl who lived in the mirror. I always felt bad for what happened to my sister, but looking back, she really had it easy. The fire took everything from me. It turned me into a monster. 95% of my body suffered severe third and fourth degree burns. My beautiful blonde silky hair had withered to black tarry ash and my once glowing skin had become charred and blistered. My closest friends perished in the fire and somehow I was blamed for the incident. But it didn't take long to figure out who was behind it all. Yikes, you don't look so good, a woman's voice called. I stared into the mirror to see who was behind me. There were two Sunny family cult members standing side by side, with masks covering their faces, each armed with a weapon. The machete-wielding cult member lifted up her mask. My mouth dropped. It was Victoria, the woman who framed me, smiling with the most sinister look. Why didn't you listen, Rapunzel? Victoria asked. She shook her head at me and continued. I specifically told you, join my sunny family or burn. I squirmed in my chair, making every attempt to break free. No matter how much I tried, the rope wouldn't let loose. Victoria walked towards me, dragging the edge of her machete on the floor. You used to be so beautiful. Now look at you. Victoria turned to face the other cult member as they laughed in unison. While they continued to crack jokes, I became lost in my thoughts, imagining what they'd look like with their pretty heads scalped. When I looked back at myself, I suddenly noticed it wasn't me in the reflection anymore. It was Mira, the girl who lived in the mirror who killed my twin sister, Ronnie. She looked at me with her glossy, translucent eyes, wearing a dirty white dress. She had flesh wound slits that extended well into the corners of her cheeks. She reached her arm out from the mirror and caressed my burnt, disfigured face. I was absolutely terrified. Rapunzel, Victoria shouted. I turned to look at her. It's time to meet your fate, she said with a smile. When I focused my attention back to the mirror, I noticed that Mira was gone. I looked around the room in a panic. Where did she go? Victoria then grabbed me by the shoulder and flipped me around to face her and the other member. Any last words? Victoria asked. I shook my head and closed my eyes. A few moments passed, but nothing happened. There was just a long silence. I opened my eyes to see what was going on. Victoria and the other cult member were suddenly a few feet away, staring blankly at the mirror behind me with horrified looks on their faces. I then heard a heavy growl, followed by the sound of fingernails, violently scratching against the hardwood floor. I knew it was Mira. She began to crawl up my chair, rubbing her decrepit hands along my shoulder blades. I shivered as a chill swiftly ran down my spine. I could feel something terrible was about to happen. I readied myself to die, but instead, Mira cut me loose. She used the same knife that I brought to kill Victoria, dropping it right into my lap. 
Mira proceeded to crawl on all fours towards Victoria and the other Sunny family member. They were backed into a corner with nowhere to go, clenching onto weapons for dear life. Mira snarled viciously as her facial cuts opened in varying directions, revealing two vertical rows of shark-like teeth. Victoria then shoved the cult member in front of her. Come on, what are you waiting for? She shouted. The cult member took a second to collect herself, then charged at Mira at full speed, swinging the weapon recklessly in front of her. Mira dodged the attack with ease, forcing the cult member to lose her balance, stumbling clumsily to the floor. Mira then pounced on her from behind, banging the cult member's head to the ground repeatedly until her skull cracked. Mira then opened her sharp-toothed skin flaps and began feasting on the unconscious body, sucking out the innards until the cult member was just skin and bone. I knew Victoria would be next, so I had to get to her first. I wanted her all to myself. I got up from the chair and ran towards her with the knife in hand. Victoria readied her machete. I swung the knife at her from every direction, but she was too fast, dodging each strike. Before I knew it, she sliced my entire hand off with her machete. My hand dropped to the ground, still clenching the knife. Blood gushed out of my arm like an erupting volcano. I dropped to the floor, screaming in pain as I tried to contain the blood with my other hand. Victoria stood over me, holding the machete at my neck. She smiled wide. Can't blame you for trying, she said. I looked around for Mira, but she was nowhere to be found. You poor thing, Victoria said under her breath. Her beady eyes made her look insane. Victoria brought the machete just above her shoulder, preparing to swing it down on my neck. In a moment of quick thinking, I grabbed the knife from my severed hand and sliced through Victoria's right Achilles tendon. She immediately fell to the floor, grasping at her wound to try to stop the blood from pouring out. I crawled on top of her and began stabbing her repeatedly until she stopped moving. I tore off a piece of her clothing and wrapped it around my bloody arm where my hand used to be. I then put her into a headlock and began cutting away at her scalp with the knife. When I finished, I walked back to the swivel chair by the mirror, scalp in hand. As I sat down and stared into the mirror, I saw something. It was Mira, standing in the distance from within the reflection. She held the decapitated head of the other sunny family member. She no longer had a mask. Her face was pale and dry, drained of all the blood. Mira then slowly dissolved into the mirror until she was gone. It was just me now. I looked at myself in the mirror for a moment, then placed Victoria's severed scalp on top of my own head. I tugged at the loose skin so that it fit snug. A perfect fit. It looked like my own. For the first time in a while, I felt pretty again. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on Crypt TV.